Hello everyone, Panda here and welcome to Strime Watch and Dead by Daylight News, the weekly show where we take a look at news coming out of the community, have a look at some fan art, have a look at some memes, and check out the Shrine of Secrets. So we have the biggest week of news here for quite a while, we have finally had some leaks for the next chapter. Unfortunately, we didn't get to wait until the official reveal on the dev stream. We actually got it an entire month sooner than we were gonna get it. And I'm sure some of you have seen it, but we have had the new killer and the new survivor and some of the new map leaked. So what's it gonna be? I've been hyping it up to be the spider killer. King's been hyping it up to be the Dracula killer. All sorts of speculation all over the place. Well, what is it? The killer is called the Dredge and it looks like this. What does that look like to you? I don't know, I think it looks a little bit like a dolphin that's been turned inside out. It does look to have the skeleton of the Demogorgon as well. You know, it's got the long arms down behind it, kind of similar to the artist as well. Not gonna lie, kind of sad that it is not a spider killer, but you know what, I'll take the dredge. And with this as well, we have the new survivor leaked. This is Hadi Kaur. She does seem to have the same wide hips as Jane, like the same skeleton as Jane. Uh, not an incredibly big fan of the cosmetics that she's wearing, but the character looks fine. Uh, obviously, we're gonna have to wait for some decent cosmetics. I don't know why these survivors don't ship with better clothes on them, you know, by default. Like, Jonah's one wasn't good. Yoichi's one. Does he even have any skins? Does he have any skins? I don't even know, uh, but there is Hadi Kaur, uh, the new survivor. And before we look at the killer and survivor abilities, let's have a little look at the new map. The new map is called the Garden of Joy. And on this offering here, the Icarus Loam, you can see this will take us to the Garden of Joy. And you can see here the flavor text is, expel malthought from your mind, from your heart, from your mouth, to prevent the darkness from corrupting your truth. For to let darkness find seed in your soul is to invite the Druini. What the hell's the Druini? And with that, the Garden of Joy, we can see the new lobby screen here. Obviously, just looking cool as hell to me. Kind of weird, everything being on the left, but I can understand that, seeing as they've got the big central piece there. We've got floating rocks, we've got some beautiful sunset, we've got a broken down motel sign and a gas pump there. Uh, looking really cool, I like this. And when we have a little look at the map here, I think you're gonna like this. I like it a lot. Right, let's have a look at the first screenshot. So we have a dark-ish map, a little bit spooky. We've got a big greenhouse there. We can see the killers coming for Hattie. I don't know what that circle on the right is trying to take a look at, but obviously we can see it's got a Thompson-esque house there, or at least a corner of one. And our second screenshot here, below low quality, <laughs> uh, we have the inside of a house and look, we've got a lamp on the wall and with the floating rocks on the lobby screen and this lamp on the wall we're definitely going to a different world here with the map a definitely very abstract world a little bit different i think than anything we've seen before so the next chapter confirmed not a licensed chapter but we also have a leak here which is kind of crazy this is going into the future we can see that the next chapter 25 is going to be a second resident evil chapter which is absolutely insane we're going to have ada wong as a survivor and rebecca chambers and the killer is pinned to be Wesker. Now, it does not say on there that there will be a new map, so we might not actually get a new map with that, which would suck because the Resident Evil map, even though it's pretty large and tough to deal with, it's pretty cool. And also, <laughs> chapter 26. So we're looking like at the end of the year now, like literally the sort of December patch. Uh, it's going to be an original chapter. We don't know who the survivor is, but the killer is codenamed Knight. Now, we can tell from the past that when they're bringing out a new killer, they don't actually call it its actual name because then it gets leaked and people find out what it is. So, codename Knight. So, you can make from that what you want. Is it going to be a Batman chapter? Uh, it's not because it's original, okay? So, damn, they really have taken the surprise out of the next chapters for everyone there. And I actually don't know I like that. You know, I actually quite enjoy the surprise. So... Boo, but you know, also it's pretty cool to know. Right, let's have a look at the new killers and survivors perks. First one up, Septic Touch. Uh, when someone's healing, they are blind and exhausted for six seconds as well after healing. Seems terrible. Honestly, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, Disillusion, our second perk. Definitely a little bit more interesting. So after you injure a survivor and three seconds passes, the perk will activate for 12 seconds. And if the survivor vaults a pallet, it will break the pallet. I've got to say, Really not speaking to me too much there. It's the three second thing that is getting me. You know, you've got to wait those three seconds before they get to the pallet. If this activated straight away, you know, you injure someone and then they vault a pallet within 12 seconds, it breaks. I get that, but I'm not a huge fan of the three seconds break. 
And our third perk, Darkness Reveals. When you open a locker, all survivors within 60 meters of a locker anywhere on the map are revealed to you for three seconds. So, open a locker, have a look around, see where people potentially are, and go and try and find them. 30 second cooldown. Again, a really lackluster perk there. I don't see this being used very often at all. And over on our survivor perks, we have our first perk, which is Residual Manifest. So after you blind a killer, the killer is blinded for 30 seconds, meaning that for that 30 seconds, they won't be able to see the aura of generators. They will be able to see the aura of hooked survivors. And honestly, giving the killer blindness does seem pretty useful. And an added bonus is that when you loot a chest, kind of like pharmacy, you get a med kit. This one guarantees you will get a basic level flashlight. Our second perk, Inner Focus, allows you to see everyone's scratch marks within 32 meters. So you're going to be seeing scratch marks everywhere. And if a survivor gets injured within 32 meters of you, you can see the killer's aura for five seconds. Why is this a perk? God, these perks seem really crap. Is it just me? And third up, we have Overzealous. After cleansing a totem, the perk activates and you repair generators 4% faster. But it does deactivate when you get injured. So I don't know, increased generator speed, really? Like, really? Weird perks. I don't know, weird perks. I think maybe the last one, the overzealous generator one, is the best out of the lot. But it is an original chapter, so... I don't know, maybe they're just giving away crappy perks? And I know it's been a lot so far, but let's have a little look at the killer's ability. It's called Reign of Darkness. So the killer ability is two parts. First off, the gloaming. Hold the power button to activate and leave a remnant behind, kind of like the spirit's husk from what I can tell here. And then after that, you can aim at a locker and teleport into the locker. If the survivor touches the remnant, it will destroy it. But when you're in the locker, you can then aim at any other locker and press the ability button to teleport again. So essentially with that locker perk before, you open the locker and get into it. Then you can look around, you can see where the survivors are and teleport to that locker. Each of the teleports consumes a token and exiting the locker return to your remnant will activate the gloaming's cooldown. Interesting. Survivors can also place locks on lockers to slow the dredge exiting them. Jeez, the dredge can break locks by exiting the locker locked or performing a base attack on the lock. Each locker can only be unlocked once. That's so weird. Some of the maps have got literally like RPD must have... Let me just try and count in my head here. Like 26 lockers on RPD. But then you go and look at the Coldwind farm and you've got to have no more than 10 lockers on there. I didn't even count the basement, like 30 lockers on RPD. Interesting. And our second ability is a Nightfall. The Nightfall meter builds when a survivor is injured or hooked or when the teleport is used. So kind of like Oni-ish. And once the meter is full, Nightfall begins. During Nightfall, survivors must navigate in total darkness. <laughs> okay. The dredge's teleport is faster with a shorter cooldown and there is no terror radius. What? So we're looking at a really spooky event here when we actually get into Nightfall. And this will last for 60 seconds. I do wonder what they mean by total darkness. It can't be full on pitch black, can it? I can't see a way that that would ever be a thing. But it's going to be dark. And there's no terror radius, so it will be spooky. And of course, the killer can teleport around. Uh, definitely interesting, really. It's all about lockers. So anyway, we're going to have to wait quite a while before we're going to see any proper information with that. They're probably going to release the PTB after the anniversary stream next month. So we will have to wait until then. But honestly, it's looking kind of interesting. I do like the locker stuff. I'm going to be interested to see how that really works. And honestly, something that I'm really, really hurt and I feel betrayed by behavior for is that they've made a new Mori animation for the Trapper on mobile so we've seen that they're getting super cool skins that we don't get on pc and console and we've also seen that those skins get individual animations and then now they're dropping this It's what everyone's been asking for for the longest time. And I cannot believe that we're not getting it. It feels like they really have actually just ditched the idea of, you know, the actual normal Dead by Daylight version being the main version. And instead, they're just pursuing the console version, which I'm sure makes a lot more money. You know, mobile games just really are a cash cow and these companies really just gobble it up. But I am just astounded by that. I don't know what to say. I really, really am a little bit upset. I really would like this. And I've been asking for it for a long time, but I really wish that we had a Mori store and an, I guess an emote store so you could buy special emotes for survivors to use and you could buy special Moris for killers to use. 
And honestly, you know, some people wouldn't buy these, but some people would buy them and it would be pretty cool to see them design some new Morries. Uh, by default, Trapper, Wraith and Hillbilly really need a new Mori. Just flat out, just replace the old ones with a new one. Anyway, apart from that, in good news this week, we had a little micro patch that fixed Ghostface's music. We have the new audio track in the game, and I've got to say it sounds a million times better than it did before. So as with all the killers, we have four different versions of it. Here is the version when Ghostface is far away from you. Definitely quite spooky, foreboding, you know, kind of cool. I mean, Ghostface is coming towards you and he's getting closer. It ramps up a little bit. You've got this weird little synth in the background. And then when he's getting really close to you, this is where it really kicks in. I love this. Really putting you on edge, knowing that the killer is right around the corner. Are they going to find you? And then when they get into the chase, it really does crescendo here. It's bloody intense, it's fast, it's a lot better than the songs that we had before, the last two versions, and I've got to say, it's pretty damn intense. This is live on the servers now, so if you play Ghostface or go against him, you will hear this music, and uh, I've got to say, it's a vast improvement, and I am glad that they really, quite quickly, came out with this, when usually I thought it would have taken them months, but they just literally just whipped it out, uh, and thank you very much, Behaviour, for doing that, because the last song was just the worst. And we finally have another skin linked into the Dead by Daylight Prime gaming thing, where if you have Amazon Prime, there you have Twitch Prime as well, you can connect your accounts and get a free skin. And the skin this week is Meg. Cycle carrier outfit. And honestly, I've got to say, I really like this. I don't like the bottom half, but the top and the face mask and the hair, I really am quite a fan of. And I'm definitely not saying that you need to do this, but if you do have Amazon Prime and you connect your accounts together, you actually get a free subscription over on Twitch. So you could always go to my stream and go and use that Amazon Prime free sub on my channel. That would really help me out as that's really where I make my income at the moment. YouTube is just not doing it. So Twitch is where it's at. But either way, you don't have to do that. But uh, the Twitch Meg skin, the Meg Prime, as Skemu called it before, uh, is here in the game and it does look cool. And also happy to announce that they are doing another cosmetic contest to build a cosmetic for Dead by Daylight to submit it to them and they will pick the best ones and make them into a killer and into a survivor skin, which is great because honestly, we've got some of the best skins from this. We've got the butterfly plague. We got the elephant clown. So if you're an artist and you can create something really high quality and beautiful that the community loves, then definitely go over and check this out. You can find the link in the description to this video. Uh, just try and make something, you know, it would be so cool in my opinion to make something and then have it put into a game that would just be sick. Uh, side note, you can also make a charm for killers and survivors. Who cares about that? But you have until May 23rd, which honestly is not very long. That's 12 days to design a skin. That's kind of weird. But anyway, you've got 12 days, so get working. And we saw this news absolutely ages ago after a couple of months of RPD being out and people just raging at it. We can see that there were the leaks that there were going to be three different variations of the RPD map added to the game. And that never actually happened. Similar to the way that Bad and Preschool got broken up into multiple maps. Resident Evil map was going to be broken up into three, but it never happened. So potentially this could be coming with the next Resident Evil chapter with Wesker. We could get three different variations of RPD. It would be really cool if it wasn't just three versions of the normal RPD. You know, we got a really different three versions. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for, not just a recycled RPD with, you know, different bits locked off. Definitely hoping that that is going to happen. Uh, it would just make RPD a lot more fun to play on when there is more variation and it's not quite as bloody big. So definitely some interesting news this week, like really the big old leaks. I am pretty disappointed with Behaviour 4 letting this happen. I don't know what they could have done to stop this happening, but I just can't believe it happens nearly every time. I think Nemesis was the only chapter that we actually didn't know until the reveal trailer, right? Oh no, Sadaka as well. It seems like for the licensed chapters, they're really good at keeping it under wraps, but the original chapters, not so much. An amazing bit of fan art here from Anne Farron, the plague, her favorite character, and it is just done so beautifully. I love all the rot. Uh, it's just, that's just super high quality. Uh, really, really, really tasty. Well done. Blake Hearts has made their favorite spirit skin here, the one with all the cherry blossoms coming out of it. 
really beautiful as always. Man, I just love looking at the fan art here every week. It's just super, super fun. And an incredible commission here from Siorai, a Prestige 3 Quentin and Cheryl divided down the middle. Really cool Quentin looking cute as hell. And finally, a trapper here from Banjoker. He has got all of his three perks there, uh, looking terrifying. Uh, the last thing you see before you don't get a trap on your head. And as I've been doing tattoos, we've got another tattoo here. This time, a full perk build. We've got Parental Guidance, Bond, Decisive Strike, and Dead Hard. Man, imagine having a tattoo of a perk and then they nerf the perk and you no longer use it. Uh, either way, a nice tattoo it looks very beautifully done uh, and hopefully they don't nerf Dead Hard. I'm just kidding, hopefully they do nerf it because Dead Hard's fucking bullshit. So there is our news for the week. Let's jump over to the Shrine of Secrets and see which perks we have this week. Starting with our survivor perks, our first perk is a David King perk. It's the most strong perk in the game. Don't at me, it is dead hard. It's 18th time up on the shrine. You all know what it does and I doubt that anyone doesn't have it out there. You press the ability button when you're injured and sprinting to take a little dash, get some distance, be invincible while you're doing so and piss the killer the hell off. It does make you exhausted afterwards, but as I said, I'm pretty sure everyone's got it because David is a free character and he just takes a little bit of playing to actually unlock it. And our second survivor perk is a detective tap perk. It's seventh time on the shrine. We have stakeout. Being within the killer's terror radius for 15 seconds without being in a chase will give you a token up to a maximum of four. And each time you do a good skill check, so hit it in the big area, that will count as a great skill check. It will give you the extra bonus and an extra 1% and use a token. So a little bit faster for doing generators and for healing. Not the greatest, I've got to say, but it is actually quite noticeable when you're healing a survivor to get that little boost, but definitely not meta and definitely not something that I would use on a day-to-day -day basis. And over on our killer perks, I'm happy to say the first time this perk has been on the shrine. It is a twins perk and it is coup de grace. Now I was calling this coup de grace for a long time, thinking that I was really fancy and pronouncing it right, but I've actually been informed by French speakers that it is coup de grace. Every time a generator is completed, you will get a token, so you can only have five per game, and this makes your lunge 80% longer, so you can really lunge a hell of a long distance. Uh, a crazy distance, really. And while only five tokens for this doesn't seem too great, if you do make sure that the other hits, you know, you take this into consideration and you only do little hits when you're right behind the survivor when you can afford to and save these up, you can really get some serious value because obviously while you're lunging, you're moving a lot faster and survivors don't expect it. And the amount of times that I get it down by using coup de grace, coup de grace, <laughs> is actually very high. You know, it really does surprise the survivors. Uh, and actually, I think it's a really fun perk to use. I just wish you got a few more tokens. Maybe when the fifth gen is done, you get like three tokens. That would be kind of cool to make it into more of an end game perk, but definitely an interesting one. And let's face it, the first time it's on the shrine, that is pretty big. And our second killer perk this week is a Legion perk. It's eighth time on the shrine. We have Discordance. Whenever two survivors get onto a generator and work on it together, the perk will activate. It will make a noise notification and let you know that there are at least two people on that generator. And after four seconds of one of the survivors coming off it, the aura will go away and it'll go back to normal. So when the aura fades, you know that there's maximum one person on the generator and maybe no people at all. So there's our shrine and there are our perks of the week. And what are my picks gonna be? Well, for Survivor, I can't possibly say get dead hard because you've all already got it. If you don't already have it, just play David for a bit, unlock it yourself, you know, save some shards for a new killer or for a cosmetic or whatever you want. And over on killer, I've got to say that I don't know. Honestly, discordance can be really useful, especially at the start of the game. It's kind of like lethal pursuer, but it's not. You know, more often than not, two survivors will get onto a generator very early on, letting you know where to go. Whereas Lethal Pursuer, it's only active for the very start of the game. It doesn't give you any value in the middle of the game or the end game. However, Discordance will continue to work. But in the same vein as that, Coup de Grasse... <laughs> I'll, I'll get it right. Coup de Grasse is actually really fun to use. It can surprise the survivors and it can actually get you some downs. So it's more of an offensive perk, whereas Discordance is a defensive perk. So yeah, I don't know. I don't Maybe get both of them. Uh, Coup de Grasse is probably not going to be on the shrine for a while as it's only its first time, so maybe pick that up while you can. 
And that's us. That is Shrine Watch for the week. I will be playing the games tomorrow. So remember to come back and check then. Click that bell button if you're one of those people. I appreciate it very much. And if you're new here, please do hit the like button and subscribe. Have a beautiful day. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Lots of love. Panda out.